It looks like the Google Pixel 4 has a major design flaw that reminds us of older iPhones. According to a new report, the Galaxy S11 will bring some major updates in the zoom department, and Minchi Kuo's new predictions show that the iPhone SE 2 will be a hit in several markets next year. I'm Jaime Rivera, and yes, for those of you asking, I am in Guatemala City. I love being here. This is an amazing country, an amazing city, and I love spending time with the kids. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with deals as, uh, well, Black Friday isn't here, but it might as well be, as we've already got retailers like B&H offering whatever we can expect from them early. For those of you who want a mid-ranger smartphone, they've got Motorola phones ranging from the Moto G7 up to the Moto Z4 with mods included with deals up to $270. This means you could pretty much get yourself a phone for as low as 150 bucks. I'm not gonna bore you with specifics because we got a lot to cover. Link to the description for each of the deals that you should consider on B&H. Now let's talk about the world of smartwatches as a, uh, yes, well, Google acquired Fitbit, but uh, the company also acquired uh, some stake in Fossil. Uh, and nevertheless, we've got a hybrid smartwatch coming, even though we thought that everything was gonna be fully Wear OS or whatever the case may be. Fossil has just launched their new hybrid HR. It is a hybrid that comes with physical watch hands and an always on 1.06 display, which you can set to show different features. It includes two variants, the Charter HR and the Collider HR. And on the upside, the battery lasts up to two weeks, but they don't bring GPS support. They are already available for a starting price of $195. They're not so bad, actually. There's already a video from Michael Fisher and also from David Kogan, which I highly recommend you watch. Now, it has been months since we've been waiting for that whole Sprint and T-Mobile merger. We didn't know if it was gonna happen or not, if it got approved or not, and as the case may be, well, it finally happened. The merger between both companies just got FCC approval, and uh, well, this is a $26 billion merger. Got approved yesterday at a three over two vote. With the merger, both companies commit to building a 5G network that covers 97% of the United States in the next six years, but they also commit that this capability will be available to up to 70% of the United States by 2023. Sadly, I don't have details on AT&T and Verizon as to when they're deploying and how long it'll take for them to achieve, so we'll keep you posted over which is going to be the best 5G deal you should consider. Now let's move the spotlight over to major cameras that uh, start with 108 megapixels. Obviously, if you saw our video that went live today from Josh, where we talk about that Xiaomi Mi Note 10, that is pretty much the first phone to include that. But according to sources, the Galaxy S11 is going to bring more than that. Apparently, this will be the phone's best selling point. The camera is codenamed Hubble. Yes, the camera alone has a code name, as in the Hubble Space Telescope. This refers to the rumored 5X paroscopic zoom lens, which Samsung has been mass producing all year. However, after years of 2X zoom on galaxies, it might not be much of a difference from the S10. Uh, pretty much the other differentiating factor is that 108 megapixel camera, which, uh, watch Josh's video, I mean, the results were good, uh, but we'll see. I mean, Xiaomi has been doing a really good job with cameras. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with the Google Pixel 4, which we did not think would come back to the hottest news. Uh, but bear with me here, our friend Jerry Rig Everything, Zach, you're awesome, man. I mean, he just posted a video over the durability test and what can I say? Pretty much his test was conducted on the Google Pixel 4 XL and it did not pass the bend test. It turns out that the antenna lines are placed on the sides of the metal frame in a way that compromises the integrity of the phone because when it bends, it actually breaks in four different spots. Once you break it, like, pretty much Zach showed in his video, there is no going back as a, even if the display works, you really can't fix anything that's broken. The phone actually bends with ease if you watch the video. So make sure you watch out how you carry it. We don't have a statement from Google, but let us know in the comments down below. I mean, what do you think about the Google Pixel 4? I mean, I've done a couple of comparisons. I'm still not done with my review. I'm still, I really wanna love that phone. And then you get to see this plus, uh, you know, comparisons like the one I did with the iPhone 11 Pro, and you're like, whoa, uh, we've got another comparison coming up with the OnePlus 17, so it makes you wonder. I mean, what do you think? Do you think that it's worth it for this phone or not? Because in my case, I think that Google should start considering a discount on that phone, like a major discount. 
and probably then it would be recommendable. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social media as our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see what I do with these phones. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.